yeah. morning. The clock is now ticking yeah. on the 10 day window that former President Trump and his 18 co defendants have to voluntarily turn themselves in. Can you imagine this? No, I, 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 it, it's really. It, Peter Baker actually wrote a great article talking about how what once was just unthinkable is now becoming, well, Tuesday. Uh, and, it's actually and, Wednesday and So, So, Peter, I'm old enough. I don't think you are, but I'm old enough, and, and, and several people on the show are old enough. We remember exactly where we were on August the 9th, uh, 1974. I was driving in my grandmom's Dodge Dart uh, into a... <laughs> I think it's Drip Mall in upstate New York and Horseheads, New York. Wow. And uh, the news came on uh, radio talking about Richard Nixon resigning yeah. from the White House. It was massive. Now, I have no doubt that, uh, that history will record these four indictments as, as uh, spectacularly out of the ordinary and, and perhaps um, for better or worse, uh, to be monumental events in American history, especially constitutional history. But you're right, though. Right now, we're in the middle of the storm, and these 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 shocks just keep coming. But like like Trump, uh, shocking but not surprising. Yeah, no, exactly. That's my first memory, too. Actually, my first political memory is my dad holding up the paper, which said the giant block letters, Nixon resigns, and talking about what that meant for the country. And and you're right, we are in a historic moment now. We often don't think about it when we are living history, but we are living history. And this uh, has great consequence for the country. We don't know where it's going to go, but you're right, there's a certain surreal quality to the idea that, it, yeah, another week, another indictment, here we go again. It's sort of lost some of the novelty your shock value. We should be shocked. It's shocking to see a president charged with a crime. Uh, certainly, uh, assuming you, you, if you think he's guilty, it's shocking. If you think he's being unfairly charged, that's shocking in its own way, of course. But here we've got 91 felony charges, four different jurisdictions, God. four different cases. Uh, and that's four trials that are coming up in the next year, let's say, assuming the dates get set. Plus, by the way, and we, let's not forget, he's got a few other civil trials coming up as well. So this is going to be a professional defendant at a time when he's trying to get back into the White House. And it's just, there's no roadmap for this. There's nothing to compare it to. Nothing to compare it to. And you know, it's very interesting, Jonathan O'Meara. I'm starting to see from people who have steadfastly defended Donald Trump all along. And of course, they've done that. If they're not pro-Trump, they're anti-anti-Trump. But you're now actually seeing some columnists, Stephen, in the New York Post saying, hey, come on. Come on. Yes, this is all the Democrats' fault. Yes, this is this. Yeah, and they'll go through and they'll attack prosecutors. But, you know, somebody like Dan McLaughlin will say, come on. Come on, Republicans. Don't fall for this again. Democrats put up like 50, Demo 50 Republican candidates last year that denied elections and Republicans that were suckers. They fell for it. Mm -hmm. And every one of them lost in all of the all of the big races. Don't do it again. And then at the end, he concedes, like I'm seeing more and more people concede. Prosecutors aren't perfect, but Trump brought this on himself for the most part. There really does seem to be uh, sort of that reality sinking in, even among the most steadfast, hardy, anti-anti-Trumpers. Yeah, that does seem to be breaking through a little bit. There was a telling moment on, on Fox yesterday where Neil Cavuto asked his pro-Trump guest, really, you think all of these are, you know, all of these cases are, are biased. All of these cases are politically motivated. Really? All of them? And it just defies logic. There's so much here. There's so much. And, and Donald Trump is now staring at a 2024 where he's going to be hurtling and shuttling between courtroom to rally date. And there is a sense, as much as he has whipped up his core base of supporters, and he has, like, the, the, his base is with him and they're not going anywhere. They believe everything he is saying. That other polling suggests, though Trump is way ahead of the field, but there's a, some of that support is a little bit soft, and that there's a fear among some Republicans that that Trump, even if they like Trump, even if they think he is being railroaded somewhat, they just think it's too much. They're fatigued, but more than that, the baggage will prevent him from winning again. And that's what I hear from Republicans here in Washington. Even those who are publicly for Trump, privately they're concerned they're heading for a repeat of 2022, where if Trump's at the top of the ticket, he's going to bring the rest of the party down with him. It's going to hurt them with independent, with swing voters as they try to win back the Senate, as they try to hold on the House, particularly in seats that President Biden won last time around. That they think that this will be another election where Trump is going to be a net 
negative for the party. And as much as it's helping in the primaries right mm -hmm. now, it is hard to make the case that this is going to that those voters are going to break his way next year as the criminal allegations just continue to pile up. And as the White House tells you, uh, and as you've reported, they understand, the White House understands that Georgia is a swing state earlier than they ever expected for one reason. Yeah. And his name is Donald Trump. And you look at these indictments and you also look at Georgia. There is a Republican civil war, political civil war going on in Georgia. Yesterday, you had the governor of Georgia oh, yeah. immediately after Donald Trump said, I'm going to hold a press conference to show how Georgia was rigged and the voting was rigged. Immediately afterwards, uh, Brian Kemp tweeted out that it's not true. He said this. Go ahead, Mika, tell the us. The 2020 election in Georgia was not stolen. For nearly three years now, anyone with evidence of fraud has failed to come forward under oath and prove anything in a court of law. Our elections in Georgia are secure, accessible, and fair, and will continue to be as long as I am governor. The future of our country is at stake in 2024, and that must be our focus. And then, of course, Brad Raffensperger said the most basic principles of a strong democracy our accountability and respect for the Constitution and rule of law. You either have it or you don't. And if you look, those are two, those are the two most powerful Republican leaders in the state of Georgia. I heard somebody mistakenly say they barely squeaked by uh, in 2022 for election. No, they won in a landslide. And, and, and they won in a landslide uh, in the Republican primary. And, and so, Jennifer Palmieri, you have, and you know this, and I know this. I think Kemp, Kemp's tweet going after Donald Trump's BS claims was so shocking when it came out as quickly as it came out, the timing Just of when no. it came out, because he didn't have to do it. He didn't have to do it then. I would say 99% of politicians would have sat back and said, eh, it's Trump. Let's just let it play out a little bit. No, he went out of his way. The governor, the Republican governor of Georgia, where this case is going to be tried, went out of his way to say, Donald Trump's lying. And the secretary of state said, this guy, he doesn't respect the Constitution of the United States. You either respect it or you don't. I thought it was extraordinarily telling, and it talks about that divide now among uh, Republicans. And I must say, when I talked to Greg Bluestein yesterday, I said, boy, it must be, you know, it must be really heated down there. And why are they doing this in Fulton County? They should do it in, in another district. And Greg said, well, that's where the crimes took place in Fulton County. He goes, but this isn't just a Democratic thing in Georgia. There are a lot of Republicans that are incredibly angry at what Donald Trump did in 2020 and how he keeps losing the Senate for Georgia Republicans. The, you know, you, I watched the show yesterday and you had a great colloquy. Can you have a colloquy between three people? I'm not sure, but you I and John Meacham and John. Is that right? I was interpreted as a two-person thing. You're the former member of Congress, you would know. Um, but between you, you and Heilman and John Meacham about Republicans and why they won't, why they won't have the courage to to push back and why they continue to accept Trump or you know pick their pick their moments when they are willing to take him on. And you know Georgia is just such an interesting case because Brian Kemp and Brad Raffensperger show that you can do this. I can't think of, I mean, Doug mm -hmm. Ducey, the former governor of Arizona, he did this to some degree. He stood up to Trump, um, famously refused to take his phone call as he was certifying Arizona's votes, but not in the way that uh, Brian Kemp and Brad Raffensperger really defended Georgia, really took on Trump. And like you said, they won they won big, and the huge. Republicans- Huge, they won huge they won wins huge wins in the GOP. And, you know, uh, Kelly Loeffler, who was briefly a senator from Georgia, ran for re -ele ran for election in 2020. David Perdue, who was senator from uh, Georgia, he primaried Brian Kemp. They all backed Trump. They all lost. The other Republicans who uh, who, you know, backed up Trump on his claims that he lost 20, the 2020 that he won the 2020 election, they're now indicted. But 
Raffensperger and Kemp show that there is a way to do this if you do it with integrity. And, you know, these two, as much as progressives laud them for what they have done to protect democracy, they're conservative Republicans. So they still win in um, they still win in these in these primaries. But it shows there is a way to stand up to Trump within his own party. All right. We want to.